Hello again everyone. Tonight we're out here with the Oldsmobile. And the main point of this video is more or less a video response to a guy that I'm trying to help get his car running. So, what the issue is, is his car, it's also a 307 Oldsmobile. It's having an issue where it's, it, it from what I gather, is backfiring and it won't start. So, a couple things so far. Um, he just put on a rebuilt carburetor and uh, it appears to be in working order. So it kind of narrows out the uh, fuel system. It uh, kind of does away with that being the suspect. So from what I see and can gather, um, I'm starting to think that this is a uh, ignition issue. And so what I'm going to do in this video is go through what I would do when I was having an issue like that. So the first thing I would do is probably the easiest thing and that would be to check the firing order. So to find the firing order right here on the back of the intake see it says firing order you can read that and then there's the actual order it's actually the same as a small block Chevy and uh, oops. if you can read it it says one eight four three six five oops and then if you look under there the last two are seven and two so that's our firing order and one thing you have to keep in mind about these Oldsmobile engines and a few other GM engines <clears throat> is unlike a Chevy which the rotor turns clockwise these Oldsmobiles turn counterclockwise so your firing order will be going this way so that's what I would check starting at your number one and then go through it would make sure each number in the firing order goes to the correct cylinder so if the firing order is okay, next thing I would check would be just uh, either pop off my distributor cap real fast and just take a peek at the rotor, make sure it's good. You know, there's nothing broken, no burns or carbon tracking or anything like that. If that looks good, I would just um, leave the cap off. And what I would do next would be to go down get the light on and if you can see right between here's the water pump this right here and this is the power steering bracket if we look between them zoom in we can see the harmonic balancer and the timing tab not sure if you can see that on there but this right here in white that's a marker that I've put over the the uh, mark on the damper and if you can look not sure how well it's going to turn up but that very first point on the bottom of the tab here says zero so what we're going to to do that all you need is a one and I think it's a one and an eighth inch socket and you just turn the uh, turn that in a clockwise direction till that point that says zero lines up with the mark on the damper. that's our top dead center so after I got the car on top dead center what I would do then is uh, look at my uh, where my rotor is it should either be pointing at the number one terminal on your cap or 180 degrees opposite of number one now that's because with a four-stroke engine you have a top dead center for exhaust and compression so it's either going to be one or the other unless uh, 
your distributor is in at a wrong position. So anyways, that's one way that you can get it in time is on top dead center and whenever you drop it in, the distributor in, put the rotor at number one or 180 out. That'll get you at least within a 50-50 shot of where it needs to be. So, like I said, if I'm having this backfiring issue, and uh, I would bring it on top dead center, pull the distributor, rotate the rotor 180 degrees, just drop it back in, put everything back together, and nine times out of ten, that solves my backfiring issue. That's probably one of the more common ways to fix that. So anyways, if you've done all this so far and you're still having a backfiring issue, and like I mentioned, your fuel system's in good condition, what I would do next would be to check the wiring to the distributor and also the components inside the distributor. So I'm going to pause this video and we're going to go take a look at some wiring and some tests that you can do on this distributor. Okay, for reference, I'm going to be using this Haynes manual. It covers these uh, the, en the engine that we're talking about here, this Oldsmobile engine. And for illustrative purposes, I have a Chevy distributor. The internals are the same. And also have a uh, cap, ignition module, and a rotor. So anyways, what we're going to do is, as I mentioned, we're going to look at the uh, wiring to the distributor. Which uh, is just going to be one wire going to it. And I'm going to show you if I can find it in here where that goes okay so his engine is an 80s 307 which um, almost all of those came with the computer controlled HEI unit but he has since like myself uh, gone to a vacuum advance HEI unit. So we're probably going to be looking at either this 75 through 82 uh, diagram or this 83 and 84. That might have been when they changed it. But anyways, here's our distributor. You can see there's our pink wire. That's the one that that's our power wire. So anyways, you can see a leg goes down to the uh, diagnostic connector. But here we have, it's wired into our ignition switch. Fuse block. The instrument panel. And to the alternator. So anyways, that's pretty much the basic wiring of this. So now I'm going to pause the video again and flip to the or um, section where it does the tests. Okay, in this first test, they're illustrating how to test the pickup coil. As you can see, there's the, ter the terminal. And on the distributor, it'll be this yellow plug right here. It, these two wires go down to our pickup coil, which is under there. So, all right, here's the directions. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to hold it there to, so you can read it. Pause the video if you'd like. So here's the next check. Measuring the resistance in the coil between 500 and 1500 ohms. There's the next check. Pause it if you like. There's how you check the vacuum advance unit.
and we're going to go to testing our cap and coil I should say at the coil actually so here's the illustration I'm going to come back to this illustration you can pause it if you'd like and there's the illustration for the next test and I'm going to pick up the cap right now and I'm going to show you the terminals that they're using so in this first one they're using the battery and the tachometer connections which would be get some light this one and that one and checking those in this next test they're using the ground and the button which would be this middle one and your button for your coil so I'm going to go over here directions pause it if you'd like and we're going to flip to the next page and it basically just tells you replacement oh that's for the older here's for the newer one continues on over here And that just shows you the coil and cap, how it goes in. And also another one. So, anyways, that's about the extent of what I can really provide for the starting and charging, or I mean the ignition system. Um, with that wiring diagram, I'm not sure, I'm not... 100 I'm not uh, very familiar with alternators it looks like the power comes from the alternator for this um, but anyways that's about what I can tell you about these ignition systems and how to try and find your problem another problem if you have a no start condition this would also be a prime suspect this is the ignition module these are uh, pretty famous for going bad in these HEI units. Um, they, they don't go bad all the time, but they are known to go bad. And what happens is uh, usually the grease gets old or there's a lack of grease and this gets hot and burns up. So if you don't, if you're running one of these HEI distributors and it has one of these type of uh, ignition modules it's definitely a good idea to keep a spare so that's another culprit that uh, sometimes causes no start issues another thing to look for make sure there's not a you can see a slight burn mark it looks like in this um, rotor also check the tip make sure it isn't burned make sure this is good and connected to each other here make sure it ain't broken anywhere but anyways that's about the basics of it what I can tell you um, if anybody else has any ideas on what's going on with this car you can either look up his channel I believe it's um, Al Al Alfredo Herrera. I, I probably mispronounced it, but that's his channel name. Um, probably the easiest way to find it is to go to the video I have on installing a distributor. And uh, he will be, you'll see his um, channel name down in the comments section. Uh, if you just click on that, he's uploaded a video of his car. And uh, if you could uh, take a quick look at that video, any input uh, or any ideas would be appreciated. But anyways, uh, hopefully this video has helped. 
or at least steered someone in the right direction. All right, thanks for watching.